Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Spencer Tracy and Ingrid Bergman in A Man's Castle. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. It's a rare week when I'm not asked by some trusting soul to reveal the secret of stardom in a nutshell. I'm always very flattered because that's a question nobody's been able to answer yet. The best I can do is to say that every truly great star possesses at least one of two great qualities, power and authority. And then I tell them to go and watch Spencer Tracy because he possesses both. Of course, two other helpful star qualities are beauty and glamour. Unfortunately, I can't credit either of these to Spence. But whatever he lacks in this department is made up tonight by his co-star from the David O. Selznick studio, the greatly gifted actress Ingrid Bergman. Not long ago, I saw these two together on the screen, and the power of their scenes convinced me then and there that the next time Spencer Tracy was on this stage, Ingrid Bergman should be his leading lady. So here they are together again, in a play that gave Spence one of his best picture roles, A Man's Castle, adapted from the Columbia picture. This is a story of two young people from the world passed by. It's a simple story. They're not great and famous people. They, they don't want to be. They're the kind of people who don't give up when the brakes go against them. And their love story is the kind that makes great emotional drama. It's a play that I'm sure will bring a thrill to every member of our audience. And a cast, that's a reward we really owe to the millions of men and women for the support they've given our product. Lux Toilet Soap. I said men as well as women because we've been getting a number of letters which, uh, which make the same point as this one from a lady in Louisiana. She writes, Dear Mr. DeMille, you always speak of your product being used by the ladies. Well, don't forget men like it too. Recently, my husband and I took a trip to the military maneuvers to see our son, who was a corporal in a medical regiment. The boys were stationed 20 miles out in the woods. When it came time for dinner, one of the boys got a basin and a pail of water so we could wash our hands. And to our surprise, this soldier also brought out a new cake of your Lux toilet soap. So you see, Uncle Sam's boys like Lux soap, too. Thank you, madam. We do see, and we're very proud of that compliment. Our stars are at the microphone now. The cast is on stage, and the curtain goes up on the first act of A Man's Castle, starring Spencer Tracy as Bill and Ingrid Bergman as Trina, with Arthur Hole as Bragg and Edgar Barrier as Ira. It's a few years ago, June 1933 to be exact, prosperity is just around the corner. On a park bench in New York City is a young man, a sartorial sensation, in evening clothes, complete with tails, Inverness cape, opera hat, and cane. With grand nonchalance, this modern Beau Brummel is tossing popcorn to the pigeons. He steals an occasional glance at the other end of the bench toward a girl who sits there, shabbily dressed but defiantly neat. The girl is acting very strangely. As she watches the pigeons eating the popcorn, there's a desperate, almost hysterical look in her eye. The man in evening clothes studies her for a while, then speaks quietly. What's the matter? Come on, spell it. I've been watching you talk to yourself ever since you sat down. You look like you were rehearsing something. What is it? Please. I'm sorry. Come back here. What's the rush? Let me go. Let me go. I'll... I'll, I'll... do what? I'll get down on my hands and knees for some of that popcorn. Hey, what is this? I thought I was on all the panhandling routines. Or are you the little girl reporter working on a sob story? Oh, oh, please, let me go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you really hungry? Come on, talk up. Are you hungry? I haven't eaten in two days. Two days? Why not? I haven't any money. Neither of the pigeons, but they eat in regular. 
Yes. Must be wonderful to be a pigeon. There's always somebody throwing crumbs to them. If you had the brains of a pigeon, you wouldn't be hungry. Come on, let's go eat. Eat? You mean it? I said it, didn't I? Come on. Oh, what a... But where are you taking me? Well, the Ritz roof is open. Oh, the Ritz roof? No, no, I didn't ask for anything like that. I... No, I can't go there in these clothes. Ah, I... uh, shut oh. up. Clothes got nothing to do with eating. Come on, let's go. You want anything else? Oh, oh no, thanks. No, this is plenty. Yeah. You know, for a pint size like he, you can certainly put it away, all right. <laughs> you're hungry, all right. But if you think I fell for your line of hooey, you're crazy. Nobody ever has to starve in a town like this. Why not? Because you don't. There's food all over the joint. Oh, yes, but you have to get near it to eat it. Were you ever out of work for all year? Sure. I've been out of work all my life. The unemployment problem never bothered me any. Yes, that's all right for you, because you're rich. <laughs> Are you wear your tails and your... Top hat and eat steaks of foot thick. You got what it takes. Sure, I got what it takes. I'll prove it to you. Hey, waiter. Come here. Yes, sir. Call the manager. Tell him I want to see him. Why, sir? Is there anything wrong, sir? No, no. Everything's swell. I just want to see the manager. That's all. Yes, sir. You know, you should never order skip meals. That was the best food I ever ate. <laughs> Gee, I, I feel better now. Yeah, you look better. <laughs> You know, if you filled out a little, you'd get by in a crowd at that. Ah, uh, you can't. You can't help the way you're made. Why can't you? Oh, uh, good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Hello, are you the manager? Yes, sir. Do you want to see me? Yeah, sit down. Why? Why, yes, sir. Uh, well, sir? You know, mister, there's supposed to be 12 million people in this country without work. Did you know that? Why, yes, but Yeah, I... and a lot of them are starving, so they tell me. Now, you take this young lady here, for instance. Up to an hour ago, she hadn't eaten for two days, so I brought her in here and fixed her up. She feels swell now. Says it's the best food she ever ate. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. The only trouble is she ain't got a cent. And neither have I. Oh. Watch that. Oh, what? You mean you can't pay for this? That's the idea, so the feed's on you, brother. Oh. Now, you know, there's a lot of ways of handling a case like this. You can call a cop and have the pair of us thrown in the can. Now, just a minute. We're sent to the island where we're fed by the state for 30 days at least. The more bums the state has to feed, the more taxes you people have to pay. This is your idea of a joke? Now, wait a minute. This is one of the joints that throws out and left, left over grub in a week to feed a thousand people. You can afford one on a house once in a while. Am I right or wrong? I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll put it right up to your own customers here. I'll ask them whether it's right for you to let somebody die of hunger right outside your dump. If they say I'm wrong, I'll admit it. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the newspapers, there's a lot of hungry people in this town. No, no, is... no, no, shut up. Go on, get out of here, get out. Okay, the case is dismissed. Come on, who is it? There's nothing like a good walk after dinner. Thanks for the feed, brother. Get out. Get out! But you shouldn't have done that. We might have been arrested. Don't be a dope. Where do you live? I might as well take you home. Well, that would be all right if I had a home. What's the matter with you? Haven't you got anything? No. What do you figure on spending the night? Uh, I don't know. Have you got a grip? No. Well, get one somewhere. Then go to a hotel and register. Stay there till they hand you a bill and then tell them you're broke. Well, then what happened? Then they throw you out and you go to another hotel. Oh, <laughs> no, no. I, I couldn't do that. Why not? I'd be afraid. Do you live in hotels that way? No, I got no use for hotels. Tell me, what do you do for a living? I live. <laughs> yes, but I mean, you must do something, huh? Those clothes, the evening clothes. Yeah, don't let them fool you. Here, look at the front of my shirt. What do you see? Why, just just the front of your shirt. Yeah. Now watch. Oh! Now what do you see? Oh, oh it lights up. Your whole chest lights up. Sure. You see what it says, or can't you read either? Cavalier Barbershop, 16 chairs, no waiting. Oh, why, you're an advertisement. Yeah, sure, that's it, a walking ad. Two bucks a night for this. All you got to do is stroll up and down and flash the light on and off. Oh, is this, is this your regular job? No, I don't believe in regular jobs. I'm only doing this for a friend of mine. I sub for him on his night off. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose I'll have to get you a place to sleep tonight. What's your name? Trina. Trina? That's awful. I think I'll just call you who's it's. What's your name? Bill. Bill? 
Bill, that's nice. Well, here we are, Hoosets. The river on one side and the railroad tracks on the other. Is this where you live? Yeah, yeah. Bagville on the Hudson. Built right smack on the city dump. How do you like it? It's wonderful. Say, I, I've been in New York all year, and I never knew there was such a place. Yeah, that's one of the best things about it, the privacy. Of course, it's just a lot of shacks, you know, but it's the only way to live. No rent, no taxes, running water, a whole river of it. And the whole dump is lousy with southern exposure. You hear that? That's what I like best, them train whistles, to remind you of other places. You hear them all night. Don't you love the sound of it? Well, it's... A, no, no, it's, a, it's a little scary, huh? Ah, gangway, get out of my way. Here I come, that's what it says, like a long-distance call. Come on. Which one of these shacks do you live in? I don't, I don't. Mostly I sleep in the open. When it rains, I take my choice. They're all my pals here. I can bunk with any one of them. They must be very nice people. The best. You know, it's funny. When people got nothing, they act like human beings. We get along fine here. It's just like one big happy family. Get away from me, I tell you. Don't bother me or I'll smack oh, you with me. What's that? That's a guy named Bragg. He don't get along so well with his girlfriend. Come back here. Let go, you. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right where you are. Did you hear what I said? Let go or I'll bring you. You can't shoot on me. I'll kill you first. Bragg. Ah! Hey, Bragg. What do you want? Why don't you let Flossie alone? Why don't you mind your own business? Let her alone or I'll come over there and help her clean up the place with you. Ah, shut up. What? Nothing. That's better. I was going to ask Flossie to put you up for the night, but maybe that ain't so hot. Right. I could sleep in the open, I guess. No, no. No, that takes training. I got it. Bear left. This shack right over here. Uh, who lives here? Friend of mine. His name's Ira. <laughs> Hello, Ira. What's the good word? In seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and his disciples came unto him, and he taught them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the good word. Hello, William. Yeah. That looks like that Gideon Bible I swiped out of a hotel last week. Bibles can't be stolen. The good word is free. I only wish I could get you to read it, William. I did, I did. I skimmed through it one night. There's some very good reading in it. There's one place especially, the Songs of Solomon. Great stuff. Who's its meet, Ira? Ira used to be a minister. Now he's a night watchman. Not used to, William. I am a minister. If I choose to live down here, I have a reason. Yeah, sure, sure. Anyway, this is Hoosens. How do you do? Very nicely, thank you. Yeah, nicely. Only she ain't got a place to sleep. I thought maybe after you checked out, you could camp here for the night. Of course. Welcome. When do you go to work? 11.30. Okay, she'll check in about 12. Oh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Nuts. Come on. Where are we going now? What do you care? You want to see where I sleep? Yeah, where? You see that barge over there? Huh? Right there. Oh. The reason I like to sleep on that barge is because there's no roof on it. Oh, it must be wonderful with the water rocking you. Like a cradle. Hmm? Oh, look at those ships there with the sails. They look so peaceful and contented. Darn. They've been laying there for years, rotting away with barnacles. That's what you get when you're anchored. Well, and just the same, it's restful. Restful, yeah. So is the graveyard. Bill. What? You're a funny guy, Bill. Yeah, why? I don't know. <laughs> what do you do when you're not walking around with your chest lit up? Lots of things. Or maybe nothing at all. Sometimes I walk the stilts. Stilts? Yeah, up on Broadway. Oh, I know what you mean. Away up in the air. All those long wooden legs with a sign on your back. Yeah, that's it. Is it fun? I wouldn't do it if it wasn't. I like being up there looking over the heads of the crowds. Hey, you're a pretty nosy dame, ain't you? Oh, I... I don't mean to be. Forget it. Bill, I want to thank you. You've been so good to me. I got you a free feed, if that's what you mean. I guess you need somebody to look after you. Maybe. Maybe you need somebody to look after you, too, Bill. Me? Oh, I don't mean like that, but... Uh, well, who... Who cooks for you? Huh? Washes your clothes and things like that? Nobody. I do it myself. But wouldn't it be better if you had somebody? Now, listen, Hoosens, don't go getting any funny ideas. Oh, no, no I don't I, like no. being tied down, see? I live alone because that's the way I like to live. I sleep in the open because that's how I like to sleep. I say what I want and I do what I want, and that's the way I'm going to do things always, see? But uh, I wouldn't tie you down, Bill. How could I? Sure. How could you? I'm like the wind. You can't grab air, can you? 
Or can you? Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Of course, this isn't a church, but I am a minister, and the words are the same. In the eyes of God, you are now man and wife. Man and wife. Bill, did you hear? Yeah, I heard. Those whom God has joined. Handcuffed, you mean? Oh. Oh, Bill, you said you wanted to. Yeah, sure, I got weak. But I told you what it means, right next to nothing. Oh, I know, Bill. It's just the idea. I know. Where'd you get all that energy from? <laughs> Every time I see you, you're working. Oh, I was out of work for all year. <laughs> Making up for lost time, I guess. Ah, this kind of work isn't real work. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you're the only woman I ever knew who had seven wash days a week. Oh, Bill's particular. Anything that goes next to his skin must be clean. I guess he's the cleanest man in the world. One of these days, maybe Bill gets me a washing machine. But that isn't so important just yet. The main thing's the stove. Bill's going to get me a real stove. For a joint like this? What's the matter with the one you got? Ah, you can only make stew on it. I could cook Bill some wonderful things if I had a real stove. He's going to get me one, too, as soon as he gets the money. <laughs> <laughs> Who ever heard of a bindle stiff getting money? Now, what's a bindle stiff? A hobo. Can't stay put except maybe in jail. Bill can make all the money he wants if he wants to. He's got personality, Bill has. He's different. If he was different, would he keep you here in a dump like this? What's the matter with your plot? How can you say things like that? This isn't a dump. Not to me, it isn't. It's... It's like... It's, why... Oh, I can't find a word. You know them, them things they got in the middle of the street? Where people can stay till traffic safe? What do you call them, huh? Safety zones? Yes, that's it. Safety zones. Hmm. That's how I feel about this place. It's like a clearing in the forest. Quiet and safe. Peaceful. Oh, that's the only thing I don't like. Those train whistles. Hmm. I guess I know why you don't like them. Getting scared, aren't you? Always wondering if that man of yours will be on one of them trains someday. No. No. Bill's good to me. He gives me everything I want. Yeah. Except maybe a stove. Bill, uh, look at that one over there in the back of the window. Queen of the kitchen. The stove to be proud of. Come on, let's get out of here. I ain't no window shopper. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? And cheap. Only five dollars. Huh? Five dollars for a stove? Oh, uh, five dollars down, that is. And only two dollars a month for only twelve months. And no interest. Yeah, no interest is right as far as I'm concerned. I don't go for nothing on the installment plan. Uh, in only a year, the store would be ours. A year? You think I'm going to hang around this town a year? Oh, it's such a beautiful, all-around kind of a store. Forget it. Go on home. Beat it. What? Aren't you coming, too? Not yet. What's for supper tonight? Stew. Stew. Go on home. All right. Bill, come down close to me. I want to whisper something. What? I love you. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill. Kissing me in the street. Now, ain't that cute? Huh. Queen of the kitchen. Five dollars down. Queen of the... Hey, Bragg. Bragg. Hello, Bill. What you doing? Nothing. I've been looking for you. How about that two bucks you owe me? What are you hounding me for? I've been working my head off trying to get dough to pay you off. Why, I'm working right now. You don't look at What kind of work? Serving a summons. You get two bucks a throw, but this one's so tough as a bonus goes with it. Ten bucks for this one. Well, why don't you serve it and get your money? Why don't I? What do you suppose I've been trying to do for three days? It's for a dame in a show, a singer named Fay LaRue. 
You can't get to her. What do you mean you can't get to her? She's got a bodyguard. I'm the third guy that's tried this week. Ten bucks, huh? Hey, suppose I serve this summons for you. I could use five bucks. Will you spit? I'm telling you, you can't do it. Every time she comes off the stage, she's got a bunch of gorillas around her. You can't get near her. You ever tried giving it to her while she's on the stage? Huh? You're nuts. Okay, I'm nuts. Will you spit with me? Sure, but you can't get to her. Those gorillas will murder you. I'll take care of them. I got a touch of gorilla in me myself. I've given all my love to you, I've given you my heart, but what have you got for me? I've offered all my worldly goods, I've really done my part, now what have you got for me? I got something for you. I got a summons. Here you are, Miss LaRue. Say, what is this? A nice, fresh summons, and you can't say I ain't got witnesses. Get off of this stage before I have your phone off. The show is swell, Miss LaRue. I'm going to thank the lawyer for getting me the tickets. So long. Oh, no, you don't. Eddie, take care of this guy. Come on, Spud, we got trouble. Where is this guy? I'll bring him. Take it easy, boys. I'm just leaving. Yeah, where do you think you're going? I think I'm going to buy a stove. And I think you're going to need a stretcher. Lay off. I'm warm. Get us out, Spud. Get him. Get him. Oh, why, you. Music. Play something. And keep your seats, ladies. Music. What? else would it be? I'm fixing dinner. It'll be ready in a minute, I think. Yeah? What's this book here? That? Oh, that's the Bible. Ira gave it to me. He wants me to read it. Yeah? There's one thing in here you don't want to miss. Oh, I do wish I had some kind of a stove there. Here it is here, right here. Listen. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Get this. Thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels. Oh, it's hard to cook with this kind of a fire. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet. Ah, you can't get an even heat. Thy neck is a tower of ivory. How fair and how pleasant thou art, O love. Thy neck is a tower of ivory. You know, you're a heck of a looking woman for a guy like me. Huh? Well, I don't know if this is going to be very good stew. Look at you, skinny, no hips. I bet you I put the potatoes in too soon. A man like me ought to have a woman who's a woman. You're nothing but bones. Yes, sir, that's just what I did. (laughs) Put the potatoes in too soon. That's all yours, bones. Do you know that? Well, uh, I'm young, kind of. That don't make no difference. Maybe it does. Maybe I'll feel out after. No, you'll never look like a woman. It ain't in you ever to look like one. <laughs> what difference does it make as long as you're good to me? Hmm? I ain't good to you. Don't get that idea in you. Not... That's the way to spoil them, being good to them. You got to step around if you want to stay with me or get your teeth knocked out. I think I ought to knock them out anyway. Uh, Come here. <laughs> What's the matter? What have I done? But, Bill, what's happened to your face? You're all cut. Never mind my face. Here, oh. here look at this. Oh, look. but your cut's on a black eye now, Bill. Will you well, stop is... that, will you stop? Here, look at this thing. What is it? It's a receipt. That's what it is. Five good hard-earned bucks for the queen of the kitchen. Bill, you bought the stove. Oh, oh my stove. Shut up now. <laughs> Take... You got your stove and I feel like I ought to... What? Come here. Little old who's it? Oh, but that's the first time you've ever kissed me like that. Oh, oh, Bill. I love you. I love you so much. Cut it out now. You women get some phony ideas, all right. Come on, now, get to work. <laughs> that stew is burnt, I'll pour it down your back. <laughs> After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Spencer Tracy and Ingrid Bergman in Act Two of A Man's Castle. And now, here are three young matrons pausing for a chat outside their favorite market. Well, girls, I must rush. I'm on my way to Bridge Club. Nice to have seen you both. Drop in some afternoon when you have time. <laughs> 
Hmm. Some afternoon when you have time. If I had half the time Ruth Graham has to spend on herself, maybe I could look like a million dollars, too. Oh, I don't know. It isn't the time you spend as much as what you do. Complexion care, for instance. You have to find the right care and stick to it. <laughs> Take me. I wouldn't think of missing my Lux Soap Beauty Facial. Beauty Facial? What do you mean, Sue? Just what I said, a beauty facial with Lux Soap. And it takes only about three minutes. But the trick is, do it regularly, every day. <laughs> and it works, too. Jim's been paying me compliments lately. Well, your skin certainly looks lovely, Sue. Guess I'll have to try those Lux Soap Facials. After all, nice, smooth skin's pretty important. Yes, busy women everywhere find that a few minutes a day devoted to gentle Lux soap care pay big dividends in loveliness. You see, Lux toilet soap has active lather that does a thorough job of removing dust, dirt, and stale cosmetics. This rich, creamy lather leaves your skin feeling soft and smooth and looking flower fresh. It's so easy to take a Lux beauty facial. You just pat the rich Lux soap lather lightly in. Rinse with warm water, then a dash of cool. Pat gently with a soft towel to dry. Now touch your skin. See how soft and smooth it feels? How beautifully fresh it looks? Lovely screen stars use this gentle care daily. They trust their priceless complexions to Lux Toilet Soap because it's as fine a soap as they can buy. It's pure, really mild. Why not get three cakes of smooth white Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? Try these active lather facials for 30 days. See if you're not delighted with the results. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Two of A Man's Castle, starring Spencer Tracy as Bill and Ingrid Bergman as Trina. It's a warm summer afternoon a few weeks later. In the busy Times Square district, the passers-by gaze upward at a strange sight, a giant 15 feet tall who strolls above them, his long wooden legs swinging easily, his trouser cuffs flapping in the breeze. Bill on stilts chooses his steps carefully. Away from the admiring crowd, they take him down a side street to a row of tenements. There he pauses and leans comfortably on the windowsill of a room on the second floor. Hey, Mug. Mug, where are you? Hello, Stilts. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Hi, kid. How's the bum leg? Oh, it's, it's all right. I can get around a little. Throwing away that crutch yet? No, but I will soon. Gee, still, I thought you died or something. Where you been? Where are the Yanks playing this week? Chicago. All right. You wanted Babe Ruth to autograph a baseball for you, didn't you? Yeah, but... Well, I had to put it up to him tonight. Did he? Did he? He sure did. Look, here's the ball. To my pal Joey, signed Babe Ruth. Gee, still, gee. Yeah, I had to go all the way to Chicago to see the babe. Gee, still, thanks. Did you hop a freight? Yeah, rode the rods all the way. Ain't got the cinders out of my hair yet. Oh, thanks. And Babe Ruth wrote this himself? In person. Is that still, Joey? Look, Ma, look. The baseball stills promised me. With Babe Ruth's autograph, he signed it himself. Stills went all the way to Chicago to get it. Gee, I gotta show the kids. Good afternoon, Stills. Hi. We missed you. H have you really been west? Only west of 8th Avenue. That was just a stall for the kid. Oh, but what about the ball? And the signature. Ah, that's forgery. I wrote it myself, but he won't know the difference, so it's okay. Hey, look, I'm glad you're home. I wanted to see you. Here's a few bucks. Oh, still, how can I go on taking money from you when I... Well, I don't even know who you are. What difference does it make? I got no use for money. You don't need it. It's just a case of supply and demand. Why won't you tell me your name? I never asked you yours, did I? No. I got no use for names. But I want to know. Suppose I can thank you. Cut it. You pull any of that, I'll stay away from here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stay away a little while anyway. I'm beginning to feel like a native around here. I'm blowing town. For good? Good or bad, who knows? Where are you going? That depends on which freight I hop. You, you don't like me to thank you, but I... Ah, forget it. 
Only get this. I've been slipping your chicken feed, see? But I might get hot in a crap game some night and clean up, and when I do, I'll send you a heavy chunk of dough some fine morning. Then you can pack up and get out of here and take that kid to the country. Maybe you can't hop freights, but anyway, you can watch him go by. That's better than nothing, man. Well, so long. So long, still. God bless you. Come in. Hiya, Trina. Oh, hello, Bragg. Where's Bill? Out somewhere. Where? I don't know. Why? If I had a wife like you in my shack, I'd be home all the time. The trouble with Bill, he don't appreciate you. That's some man you got yourself, kid. He suits me. Yeah, but do you suit him? You wouldn't think so from the way he's always playing you down, crabbing about how skinny you are. Well, I am skinny. No, you're not. Slim, but not skinny. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sure. You're a good-looking kid. I've been watching you a long time. Ever since you come here. Oh, you better not let Bill find that out. He's got a temper, Bill has, and he's liable to break you in half. Right smack in half. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Bill's too busy. Busy with what? All I know is there's a blonde in a show on Broadway that's been on his trail lately. Blonde? A show? Yeah, he made a killing that time he served the summons on that dame. He beat up two of her gorillas, and she's kind of took a fancy to him. Some dames are like that. I guess he goes for her, too. How do you know? Because he told me. You're a liar. Bill's no cheat. If he wanted anybody else, he'd tell me first. Well, if he ever does, you know where I'm at. You. Even if I never knew Bill. Even if you were the only one left in the world, you couldn't get near me. How do you like that? Swell. Gives me something to work for. Different men work different ways. Me, I got one principle. Take your time. And you're worth it, Trina. You're swell. Get out of here, Bragg. Stay out. Sure, there's no hurry. No hurry at all. Sit down, Bill. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. What's on your mind, Miss LaRue? I've been trying for a month to get in touch with you. I asked at the lawyer's office, and they told me a guy named Bragg served that summons. When I spoke to him, he told me it was you. That's right. You know, when you served those papers on me, you let me in for a nice little suit. 10,000 smackers for alienation of affection. Well, what do you want to go around alienating affections for? It's your own fault, the way I see it. <laughs> what is the party for, Miss Lou? Uh, just to get acquainted. You know, you certainly showed up those two mugs I kept with me. One of them's just recuperating. Midgets. Yeah, well, I gave them the air. Right now, I'm in the market for a new bodyguard. You don't need no bodyguard. You look like you can take care of yourself, all right. I always have. Yeah. Well, I gotta beat it. What? Stick around. I need a couple of laughs. Anyway, it's raining and there's no matinee today. You don't have to be afraid of me. Me? I ain't afraid of nobody. <laughs> That's the brave little boy. <laughs> Listen, I figure maybe I'm not going to be around when that suit against me comes up. I got a chance to go to South America. Yeah? South America. That's the place, boy. Rio de Janeiro. You ever been in Rio? No, have you? No, but I'm going someday. Oh, there's a place, Rio. All they do down there is dance and play guitars. I met a little dancer from there once. She was, uh... Oh, well. I suppose you know all about women. I know one thing about them, all of them. What? They're all female. Is that a compliment or a pan? It's a fact. Well, don't go. Say, how long does it take you to get acquainted anyway? Me? I'm easy to meet and hard to forget. What? <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> oh, nothing. You're all right. I like you better all the time. You grow on me. Yeah? Yeah. Sit down. You know, maybe you ought to see Rio. I bet you'd really like it. I bet I would, too. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> you women get some phony ideas, all right. Some phony ideas. Put it back on the stove to warm up. Hmm? What? Your dinner. I'm warming it up. Don't bother. I had dinner. Oh. It was hot today, wasn't it? Why don't you say what's on your mind? Why don't you squawk because I come home late for dinner? 
Well, you have a right to come home late, Bill. Maybe I should have telephoned. How could you? We haven't got a phone. Maybe I ought to make up excuses for being late, huh? Of course not. You're your own boss. You're darn right I am. Oh, Bill, you're tired. Why don't you lie down? I don't want to lie down. I'm going out for a walk. i got to get some air. All right. See you later. Hi, Ira. Evening, William. What are you digging for? I'm just weeding out the garden. Weeds grow faster than you can pull them out. That's a dying-looking layout of wherever someone. Oh, you've got to give them time to come up. There's no special hurry. What kind of a dingus you call that one there? That tired one over there. Is that one? Well, that's a zinnia. They're all zinnias. What do you take for that old sleepy one? Well, I'd rather not sell them. I'll give you a dime for it. Well, you must want that flower pretty bad. I tell you what I'll do. I'll pick a bunch for you and give them to you. What did I want with flowers? Let me know how much they are and I'll pay you tomorrow. When you get done picking them, just uh, stick them in the window where Trina will see them, will you? All right, William. What's going on down at the dock? There's a crowd on there. Oh, not very important. Bragg's making a speech to some yeah, of the tenants. Uh, beefing again, huh? Well, know. I got a beef for him, too. Why should certain guys have all the money and you and me have nothing? Why, they're on the inside, that's all. They tell you to go out and get a job. What job? There ain't no such animal. Look at me. I'm skilled labor, one of the best toy packers in the business. What's a toy packer? Shipping, Bill. Packing toys to ship. I'm one of the best men in the business. Used to work for Stark and Lee, where Ira works. And they let me out without any notice. Not a day. We're getting drunk? Me? Say, I never got drunk on a job in my life. They claimed some stuff was missing. Just the same old alibi to let me out and save a couple of dollars' expenses. Listen, Bragg, we know you. If they let you out, it was your own fault. Yeah, yeah. All right, don't believe me. Walk out on me. You'll see someday. Looks like you lost your audience, Bragg. You should never spiel around supper time. Yeah, that's it. If they had brains instead of stomachs, they wouldn't be what they are. I'm sick of them. I'm going to blow this dump soon to get some dough. That'll be never. Is that so? Listen, that toy factory I was talking about, they fired me, didn't they? They owe me something and I'm going to collect. Get this, Bill. They got an old tin can they call a safe. Every Friday, they get ten grand for the payroll, and it stays in the safe till Saturday noon. It'd be a pushover, Bill, if you went in with me. Five grand apiece, Bill. What do you say? In the first place, what do I want with five grand? Number two, if I needed money, to go out and make it. And number three, Trina tells me you've been hanging around a shack while I'm away, and she don't like it. I told her I'd speak to you about it. There's only one language you can understand, Bragg, and this is it. <coughs> Good night, Bragg. What's the matter? It's only ten o'clock. Did I ask you? No. Well, then shut up or I'll let you have a couple in the ribs. Oh, Bill, stop. Oh, did oh. I hurt you? Oh, oh. Not when I know you didn't mean it. Oh. Suppose I slugged you hard. You wouldn't. Don't be so sure. Bill. What? I got your flowers. They're beautiful. Those things? They didn't even get any smell. Ira told you, told me you, you bought them to me. Gone. What kind are they, Bill? You mean you don't know? No. No kidding. Are you that dumb you don't know? They're, uh, they're, uh, what do you call it? There's, uh, eczemias. Are you sure? Certainly I'm sure. <laughs> well, I don't care what kind they are. They're lovely. Throw them away. They're all shot. No. Go on, they're no good. I'll get you some good ones. Big ones. No, no, no. I want these. Okay. Bill, do you like being with me? I ain't so nuts about it. You're pretty skinny. <laughs> you you're not tired of me yet, are you? I don't know, maybe. Hey, listen, what's the idea of keeping that skylight closed? When I rented this dump, I put that in special. What do you keep it shut for? Well, I, I thought it might rain or something. Well, suppose it does. Rain's good for you. It makes you grow. There. That's the way to live. You can breathe now. Why do you always keep looking up at the sky? Because when you're dead, you get a hunk of earth. When you're alive, you want to hold on to your hunk of blue. That's all I got in the world. That's all anybody's got is that hunk of blue. Bill, I've been thinking. There couldn't be a heaven much better than this, could there? I mean, when it's quiet all around and, and we are close. Like now. You know, I never noticed it, kid, but your eyes are sky color, sort of. You got a hunk of blue in each glim. Yeah, but that don't stop me from clouting you on the chin any minute. Come here. 
You're all right. You're a swell kid. I like you plenty. <laughs> Do you, Bill? Yeah, but don't get figuring on that too much. Because how much I like a woman ain't nothing to bet money on. Don't let yourself get in too deep, see? Oh, you, you mean you... No, you... no, no, not yet. Oh. <laughs> but I'm apt to hand it to you any day. Who can tell? Suppose I wake up some morning with a taste in my mouth like wet hen feathers. I'm just as apt to take a stroll for myself as not. Maybe that won't be right away, huh? I mean, not tomorrow, quite so soon. You can't tell. No one knows how guys have to feel some morning. Same. Listen, Bill. You like babies, don't you? What's the difference if I like them or not? Uh, I, it would make a difference. A big difference if you didn't. Why? Because you're going to have one. What? I, I've known it a long time, several months. I thought I'd be afraid to tell you, but, but now I'm not afraid of anything. Say, listen. No, no, don't say anything, Bill, till I finish. I want you to know something. It's your baby and, and mine. But you'll have nothing to worry about. I, I didn't mean to tell you at all, but it's just too wonderful to keep to myself. Oh, you can't understand it, Bill. You're a man, but you... Listen. Oh, oh, no, you needn't look at me like that. I'm not afraid of you, darling. I've changed a lot. Only a little while ago, I was all alone. Then you came along, and there were two of us, and soon there'll be three of us. You can never leave me now, Bill. Never. Never. Even if you go away, I've got you now. No matter what... No matter where you go, no... No matter what you do, I've got you. I've got you! Wait a minute. Yes, Bill. Is this... Is this on the level? Yes. Let me out of here. Are you leaving me, Bill? What if I was? You got no kick. No. No. I suppose I'd be lonely again, the way I was before I met you. But it wouldn't be the same exactly. I, I've got something to look forward to now. I'll say you have. I'll never be lonely when my son comes. How do you know it'll be a son? I, I prayed for a son. I thought you didn't believe in that sort of stuff. Sure I do. You told me you didn't. I lied. I didn't want you to get sore at me. I guess you're angry now, aren't you? Why should I be? It's your funeral. Yes. Yes, it's my funeral. I'm going to stand on my own feet now. I'm going to bring my son into the world, and I'm going to take care of him and love him always. Oh, and as far as I'm concerned... Oh, I... you too, always. That goes without saying, but... You're a free man, Bill. As free as a bird. Remember that. I will. Frank, Frank, come out. Open up. What do you want from me? I want to scram out of here right away tonight. Only it so happens I can't go unless I leave some money behind, see? Enough to take care of somebody, a couple of people, for a long time. i got to have plenty of money, see? I haven't got a dime, Bill. Not a dime. No, but you know where to get it. Oh, you mean the toy factory? Yeah, now spell it. It's a cinch, Bill, a cinch. How about Ira? He's the watchman down there. Ira, that's the easiest part of it. All the guy does down there is snooze. We could walk away with the building and he wouldn't know it. All we need is a couple of drills and some gunpowder and boom. Yeah? What's the best time? About one in the morning. All right. I got something to attend to first down around Broadway. Then I'll meet you half past 12 on 39th and 8th. I'll meet you, Bill. I'll have all the stuff ready. Yeah, we'll be on time. And keep your mouth shut. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Spencer Tracy and Ingrid Bergman, will bring us Act Three of A Man's Castle. While we're waiting, here's what happened at a wedding reception out in Beverly Hills. Suzanne Martin, a bridesmaid, has caught the bride's bouquet, and now... Suzanne, I... Look, you caught the bride's bouquet, and you know what that means. (laughs) Well, but David, I... Darling, let's tell everybody about us now. I... Suzanne, I love you so... You're so sweet. When a man says the girl he loves is sweet, he doesn't stop to figure out exactly what he means by it. He just knows that she's nice to be close to, appealing. Clever girls know how important it is to keep this charm of flower freshness, to protect it carefully. And for girls like these, there's always romance ahead. Screen stars tell you about a truly delightful way to protect this most important charm... They use their complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, for their daily beauty bath, too. You see, Lux Toilet Soap has creamy, active lather that's thorough. It just floats away perspiration, dust, and dirt in a twinkling, yet so gently. 
that it seems to caress the skin, soothe and refresh you. You'll find this luxurious bath leaves you feeling wonderfully dainty and fresh from top to toe. Just try Lux Toilet Soap for your daily beauty bath. You'll love its delicate fragrance, a flower-like fragrance that clings. Put a note like this on your shopping list now. Tomorrow, Lux Toilet Soap, to make me sure of skin that's sweet. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of A Man's Castle. I've offered all my world. It's a few hours before the robbery planned by Bill and Bragg. Over on Broadway, the last act of a musical comedy is in progress. And Bill is waiting in the wings to see Faye LaRue. At the finish of her number, she runs from the stage into Bill's arms. Hello, hard to forget. I gotta see you a minute. Come over here. You look worried, hard to forget. But you shouldn't. We're closing the show next week, and it looks like that trip to Rio's in the bag. How does that sound? Great, but I can't go. Can't go? Are you kidding? I told you my trademark, didn't I? Subject to change without notice. I know, but I've arranged everything. I'm sorry, but I can't go. Well, what's happened? I let myself in for something on the installment plan. Well, what is it? I'm in a jam. Oh, I guess I know what it is. It's a girl. You're a fortune teller. It is, isn't it? Search me. I won't know myself for a while. Oh, I see. And I won't be around then to find out. Listen, don't be a sap. If you're taking it on the run, you might as well run to Rio. No. No, it's different now. I don't know why, but it is. So long. Good luck. Easy to meet. And hard to forget. I tell you, Bill, I could open this safe with a nail file. You ain't got it open yet. Shh, not so loud. Hey, hey, look at this. What are you doing there? Look at this gadget. What is it? Ain't that a hot one? Wait till I wind it up and see what it does. Say, what are we here for? To kick in this safe or play with toys? Come on. Just a second. I want to see how it works. Cut that out. Give me that. Keep your hands off. What's the matter with you? You want to wake up, Ira? If this wakes him up, what's going to happen when you blow that safe? I still think you ought to go back and tap him on the head like I told you. I'd feel a lot better if he was gagged and tied up. Ah, Ira wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, just the same. You better go over and open that window there. What for? We're up three stories. There's a fire escape. Sure is a swell night out. Look, you can see the old river from here. And the camp, too. The moon sure looks slick on that water. Yeah, I think when I blow out of here, I'll hit the waves instead of the ties. Maybe on a freighter. Did you ever go downtown and get the smell of them ships that come in from China and them places? Hmm, I wonder what little Hoosiers is doing. I'm going to take this toy home to her. She can give it to the kid. Will you can that and lend me a hand? We ought to get out of here. Bill, listen, will you? Shut up. What's the matter with you? You know, I don't like this job. What? I don't like it. Are you nuts? Maybe, but I got a funny idea. I always got along before without pulling this kind of a stunt. I got along swell. I don't want to change my luck. You mean you're walking out? Yeah. I'll see you around. Oh, no, you don't. Get back here. You ain't going to try to stop me, are you? No, but... Well, then shut up. If I feel like walking, I'll walk. Bill, listen. There's someone outside. It's Ira. Get out the window. Who's in here? Get out, quick. Stand or I'll shoot. Don't move. Here? Sure. Hi, Ira. Bill. Yeah, Bill. Say, for a guy that reads Bibles, you shoot pretty straight, don't you? The son of a gun, you might have killed me. Oh, served you right if I did. Somebody ought to teach you a lesson, young squirt like you, going around robbing places. Yeah, it's a low-down thing to do with that, isn't it? But if you had that money as bad as I do, you wouldn't be so particular. Who was that man with you, the one who got away? Hell, I don't remember the name. I never met the guy before tonight. I see. All right, Bill. What's the matter, Pop? What are you looking so sour about? Are you disappointed in me? I'm not thinking of you. I'm thinking of your wife. My wife? Your wife, Trina, who trusted herself into your hands, who looks up to you. My wife. Hmm. I never thought of Trina as a wife. You just... You should just treat her. What's that racket? Somebody set off the burglar alarm. There'll be cops all over the place in a few minutes. Well, what are you standing there for? Go on, beat it. Hurry before they get here. 
Go on. Okay, Ira, thanks. Did you call me, Brad? Yeah, come in quick. It's about that guy of yours. Bill? What? Yeah, he got nabbed robbing the safe at the toy factory. They caught him with the goods. No. Oh, no, you're lying, Bragg. Bill wouldn't do a thing like that. Bill isn't a thief. That's just it, stepping out of his class. That's why he got caught. And he was shot, too, trying oh. to get away. Shot? Wait a minute, honey. Don't get upset. He may go up the river for a spell, but I'm still around. I'll always be around, baby, to take care of you. Let me out of here! There's no hurry. I'll be here. Only with Bill and the jug, you're going to need a man around. Come on, kid, you might as well shake yourself out of it. Moon around won't get you no place. He's gone, ain't he? I tell you, he's gone. You're a liar, Bragg. He ain't gone. Flossie! Bill just got home. I saw him go in the shack a minute ago. Bill! Bill! I was mighty decent of you, Bragg, to offer to take care of Trina. I didn't know you had it in you. Look, Flossie, nobody asked you to butt I'm in. I'm getting sick of your two-timing, Bragg. Very sick. Gosh, oh, shut up. Let me fix it. Hand me that bandage. It's all right, I'm telling you. It just grazed me, plowed a little meat off. What's eating you? You think it was you got drilled instead of me? I wish it was me. Why did you do it, Bill? Why? I couldn't check out leaving you high and dry, could I? That dough would have taken care of you fine, but I flopped. I'm glad you did. I wouldn't have taken that money anyway. I'd have given it back. Yeah, how do you suppose you'd have got along? It takes money to have a kid, don't it? No. For a strong, husky man, you're awfully afraid of a little bit of a thing that isn't even born yet. Oh, if I'd known it would scare you so much, I never would have told you. I would have gone away myself. I didn't know you were such a coward, darling. Coward? Sure, afraid of a baby. Why, they're born all the time. And if they happen to be men, kids, they never grow up. Just keep reaching for the clouds all the time, listening to train whistles. Oh, you're so sad. Robbing safes to get money when you always said you had no use for money. It wasn't for me. Yeah, for me, I know, but I don't need any. I don't need anything, not even you. It isn't as if you ever said you loved me. You never did. And I don't blame you. Don't you suppose I know? I'm just a stick in the mud. A barnacle, that's what I am. I've held you back and messed up your plans. I didn't mean to. You can go and stay as long as you like. Maybe someday you'll come back. Not for good, I don't mean just to visit. You might get lonely sometime and... and <laughs> curious. I want to know what your son looks like. Maybe... Well, even birds can't fly all the time, can they? They get tired and have to come home sometimes. They have nests, haven't they? Trina. Oh, Bill. Please, I want you to feel right. I want you to be happy. I'll do anything if you'll only be happy. I'll give up anything, but please, please be happy. Bill. Yeah, what? You better get out of here now. The cops are on their way. How do you know? I got inside information from a stool pigeon pal of mine. Your freight train's waiting. You better hop aboard. No. No, I'm sticking around. Take my word for it. If you hang around here, you do for the stir, and I don't mean a weekend. The quicker you scram, the better. No. I ain't gonna leave who's it's. Well, you dumb sap, why don't you take her with you? Did you ever think of that? No. What about it, kid? Do you want to go? Wherever you go. You know what it means. Wherever you go, Bill. All right, get your things. What are you thinking of? I'll certainly miss it. It was such a beautiful stove. Uh, you can always get another one on the installment plan. A better one, too. Oh, it'll never be really ours unless we stay in one place long enough to pay for it. <laughs> and you wouldn't want that, Bill. You want to be free. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking a lot about that freedom business. I believe in it. It's great stuff. But, uh, well, maybe it ain't always a question of keeping on the move, you know. There's, a, there's another kind of freedom, too. Up here in your head and here in your chest where your heart is. Bill. Right now I got a funny feeling, Trina. You know, even birds got a home and instinct. And I got a feeling we're going home. Home? Where is it, Bill? I don't know. It's 
somewhere. Some place that suits us. Yeah, we gotta find it soon, too. You know, you know, a freight car ain't no place to bring up a kid. Oh, Bill. <laughs> little who's it? Funny little who's it? Curtain comes down on a man's castle as the night freight carries Bill and Trina to new hope and a new life. Right now, to Spencer Tracy and Ingrid Bergman, we say well done. Thank you. Thank you, CB. It's a pleasure to come back to the Lux Radio Theater, especially when such a really fine actress as Ingrid Bergman is here, too. Mm, that much of a compliment from Spencer Tracy is something to remember, Ingrid. Yes, I won't forget a word of it. But Spencer may be sorry he went overboard like that. Overboard, eh? Come along great with the American language, C.B. Well, you see, Mr. DeMille, when I made a picture with Spencer, between takes he gave me lessons in American slang. (laughs) Well, just to please me, Ingrid, don't spend too much time on the slang. Okay. (laughs) Mm, I was afraid of that, Spence. There's one thing everyone would like to find out right now. What's your next picture assignment? What are you working on? Well, uh, I'm kind of working on two pictures at once now, C.P. I'm working on the new uh, Catherine Hepburn picture, the Woman of the Year, and also Tortilla Flat with Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar. <laughs> Hedy Lamar and Catherine Hepburn. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like very pleasant work. Yes, I feel very jealous, Spencer. <laughs> now, Mr. DeMille, I'd like to add my compliments to all those you have received on your product, Lux Soap. This has been my first chance to tell you, but I think Lux Soap is a grand help in complexion care. For a further comment on Lux Soap, I refer the ladies to any nearby screen which shows a close-up of Ingrid Bergman. What's going on around here next week, C.B.? Next week, Spence, we have a comedy that breaks the speed limit on laughs. It's The Doctor Takes a Wife, adapted from the Columbia picture. And our stars will be Melvin Douglas and Virginia Bruce. It's the story of a doctor who marries an author. A lady who's written a bestseller glorifying the state of spinsterhood. I'm sure you'll see the possibilities of that situation with two accomplished players like Melvin Douglas and Virginia Bruce in the starring parts. It sounds like a winner to me. Good night, C.B. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And a four-star rating for all three stars. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Melvin Douglas and Virginia Bruce in The Doctor Takes a Wife. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every year at this time, Christmas seals begin to make their appearance in, on millions of letters and packages. In the past... This annual campaign has financed a nationwide battle against one of man's greatest enemies, tuberculosis. And during the next few days, your local chapter of the National Tuberculosis and Health Association will ask you to buy Christmas seals once again, or perhaps some have already been sent to you. Buy all you can. Remember that every penny goes to help stamp out tuberculosis. Spencer Tracy appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayer Studio. Tune in next Monday night to hear Melvin Douglas and Virginia Bruce in The Doctor Takes a Wife. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcast.